Hey everybody, welcome to the... Let me actually remake it. And don't actually cut it, production. I want to make sure that this stays real. Hey everybody, welcome to... No, it's first the other thing. Hey everybody, this is Carlos Ocelot and welcome to the G2 Podcast. Today, you guys know, every single time that we have this podcast going on, somebody relevant comes here to give us kind of insight of what's going on in their life and what went on before and it's always good to learn from people that we know are doing well and for that reason i have today marcel more known as dexter he was a professional player uh, years ago just like me now we are both washed <laughs> up and we're going to talk about that so how's it going man Good, man. Thanks for calling me relevant and having me here. Yeah, I think it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a great surprise. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, people that are relevant for me are people that have, I mean, within esports, right? Uh, are people that are for many years hustling to make this, uh, you know, what it is today and what will be tomorrow, you know? Uh, every time you come in with one more grain of sand, one more grain of sand, and then all of a sudden it's a, it's a little bit of a mountain, which is what we have today. So congrats, man. Yeah, I think it's fun, you know, like five years, like on this day, like five years ago, we were like playing against each other, you know, UNSK, yeah. and Lemon Ducks, you know, now we're just sitting here, just talking esports. Really so cool. be, is, let's actually go there because I think it's fantastic, you know, those people that were professional players before and then kind of did, um, by the way, production, you tell me if this microphone is too high because my face must be seen. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much um it's it's always good it's always good yeah we we, we fuck around like that yeah no. um so it, it's always good to see professional players uh, or even athletes or traditional sports turn into um business people yeah because many of the abilities that you learn and develop as a professional player um of any sport really then you can use later right so the, why don't you speak a little bit about before lemon dogs wasn't it <clears throat> dragonborns we don't talk about that, yeah. But... <laughs> Listen, I know it's a taboo topic. <laughs> no, I know it's a taboo topic. But... Yeah, I, I think I made my debut on uh, Dragonborns. Yeah, my first my first event was the the LAN at in Lil, if you remember that. So I do. I uh, yeah, I played um, even before that. I played like with mouse bots, um, tried to make it into the LCS myself, um, and I think we were just like kids just playing around, and then we just beat like Millennium and made it to the next stage. And then suddenly we are like on LAN and I was like, yo, what's going on? And then with Dragonborns, everything happened. Um, just played for like two weeks there. And yeah, I was just like playing games. And then we didn't make it into the LCS, but um, with my team, with uh, Mossbots. But mm -hmm. then Cinders Never Sleep, aka Lemon Dogs, uh, just said, yo, we need a new jungler. Yo, let's, it, yes, let's... I remember that. Cinder's never sleep. Oh yeah, my like, God. Like Nuke Deck just messaged like, yo, we need a new jungler. You know, yeah, you want to Is join? it the year of Nuke Deck? <laughs> <laughs> it is always the, new, uh, the year of Nuke Duck until it isn't, you know, but uh, I think he has been playing super well. Um, I mean, you know, I, I always tell the people, um, I have no fucking idea. And, and sorry for the, why do I even say sorry for the, I literally curse like the whole podcast. Um, and I always say, you know, this Nuke Duck guy, he's so good. How did he not win an LCS split yet? Is this so weird? I mean, it's the same reason why he, Yuzi never won like a split, right? He he never was crowned and he was always regarded as the best player. But I think for Nuke Dug it probably has like a lot of different factors. I mean in scrims he's always he has been considered like the scrim god for like five years or something, right? He's always good. Um sometimes it doesn't really translate on the stage, but I I know, I mean I played with him, so I think he has uh he was actually like super good when I played with him, you know, and then in 2014 he had this super unfortunate year where he got banned and then yeah. back on track. You, you with were Rocket. in Lemon Dogs by the time when Mithy was there as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, so we we got Mithy in week four. I think we had I a pretty weak, we had a pretty weak start and there's like uh we need like a change and then we had Mithy and then we just started winning everything. Weren't we in like Russia or something like that? Like playing? Yeah, we had yeah. Russia it was Russia, yeah. That was the craziest part, right? So the first week was Dreamhack, Sweden Super Week. Then we went to ten, uh, to Russia, yeah. one week in Cologne, and then Tenerife, you know? Yeah, I, I remember that. Dude, I think it's... I, I'm so crazy. sad. I'm so sad we don't have these road trips anymore, you know? That so was really fun. It was like, honestly, like the time of my life, you know? Like, just traveling around the world, just different stops. Winning felt also really good, you know? Um, and I think all of us, like, were like, just high school. Like, it, it felt like high school, you know? Just like, everyone comes together, goes on these road trips, you know? It's just true. having fun. For me, I always like, I was just thinking about yesterday when we talked about this on the past, like, man, I think the time Lemon Dogs probably replaced my high school years because I never, like, we never, like, 
pursued education in a lot like university so for me it's like yeah man those days probably it's like true i mean for it, me replace those days you know you know it, it's, I've, I've, I've never done a university career either you know yeah. uh, by own choice and uh, and many people tell me oh man you don't know what you what you miss the campus and blah blah and i'm like do you even like like do you understand <laughs> <laughs> the kind of shit that went on in this tournament like do you, under, do uh, you... Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, when, when you look at nerds, you're like, man, do they even know how to have fun outside of the... Well, tell me, let me tell you. We do, okay? Yeah. We do know how to have fun outside of gaming. Can those, you attest to that? Those were some really fun weekends. I think everyone <laughs> had to, like, yeah. We shouldn't probably talk about it too much in depth, what happened, but um, I think everyone, all teams... Had what a happens really in esports time. stays in esports. That's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lemon Ducks. Um... You guys, I remember you had an insane, um, actually, split, like the league. You guys did amazing. Yep. Um, was it Nukedak by then? Yeah, it was Nukedak, right? In, yeah. in the mid lane? Yeah, we had Nukedak in the mid lane. And mid in the bot That's like a Mithy lot of... Mithy bot lane, Taps, AD carry, and Zoro Zero in the top oh, lane. Taps. He was good as well there. Yeah. And Zoro Zero was insane. Then he went to CLGU, right? Was it? No, he played... No, no, sorry. No, he was about to in the super team thing. It was wicked, yeah. He was about to and then... I NIP. With NIP. NIP. And then they... He forgot to patch his client, so they didn't make it in. You remember that when... I remember that. I was like so sad, you know. I was like, oh my he God. He forgot to patch his client. And, and then he didn't make it in. That's though. so weird. Uh, like, imagine that happens today. Like, shit goes down. I mean... You have like millions on the line now, you know, if someone forgets to patch the client, you know, you better think that <gasps> oh someone's getting god. fired, you know, but... Oh my god. Oh, it was sad. I mean, Lemon Dogs forgot to write their paperwork too and then just got kicked out of LTS. So. Oh my god! Like... So it was kind of, I don't know. <laughs> Those were like the days, you know, five, five years ago, it just... Um, yeah, you can't really think that this will happen today, you know, like yeah. failed paperwork, you lose a spot in the LCS, like think about the implica implications has, you know? Imagine you like missing your paperwork and you get kicked out of LTS right now. Just unbelievable. Would be um, done, you know? Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, <sighs> you know, th these things used to happen uh, in various areas and us as players took uh, the shortest end of the straw. That is, uh, that is the fact, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if, you know, some of, some of us were lucky enough to be able to be in decent places. Uh, yeah. But the truth is that you know, many players just got absolutely, you know, demolished yeah. by this lack of structure. Today, that's like long gone. Yeah. Like, yeah, there are organizations, we will talk about that. There are organizations, <laughs> you know, X, Y, Z, um, that, um, that, you know, are still kind of shaky. But um, for the most part, I think we're doing a pretty good job at advancing this forward. And people like you actually play a, a really big role. Um, so I, I like to understand a little bit that that difference or actually the transition from that life as a player mm -hmm. into the first thing you did afterwards was uh, ESPN as far as I'm concerned, right? Was the score esports. The score, sorry, the score, yeah. you're right. Um, how was that transition and which abilities you think you, you were able to use in the score? So I think um, just that you mentioned it, I think players that um, were good at the game, players that made it far enough to play pro and go pro and had more aspirations than just playing the game. I fundamentally believe that if you like put everything that you like, all the perseverance and resilience, and you learn a lot of discipline that you that as a player for myself that changed me so much that I don't I wouldn't have learned that in any like path of my life I think except in esports. So I kind of used that. Um, and I saw that there's more out. I'm very good friends with like all the YouTubers here. Hand of Blood, it's like yeah. a really big German YouTuber. Um, so I was just hanging out with them. Like He's just... the reason why P Poe went to uh, All Star, no? Wasn't he? Yeah, he pretty much carried his career. Yeah, his yeah. campaign. Yeah. So yeah, he, he's a good friend of mine. Um, God damn it, Hand of Blood. <clears throat> we were just like hanging out, um, and they were like doing this influencer thing and League of Legends in Germany. So I just on time. I still while I still was playing, I was like hanging out a lot with them. So I was doing like this influencer thing in Germany, but I was like, eh, this doesn't really fit me. I, I don't like it. You know, it doesn't have like more of a path for me and I want to do something else. So that's when the score esports contacted me and Skara at the same time. And we're like, hey, you've done a lot of casting work. I still remember us casting. We actually casted a, a tournament together. I remember that. I am Taipei, right? I am Taipei. That was actually fun. That was pretty fun. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like... yeah. Then I realized I can't cast. <laughs> 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 that, that was the moment I realized yeah. I better find something else. 
No, but yeah, I casted a bit of tournaments. Uh, I am Katowice. Um, I was in OGN in Busan with Monte Cristo. So I was like, eh, I should probably do some camera work. I tried out at least, you know. So yeah. that's when they contacted me. I was like, yeah, I mean, you pay good money, so let's do it. You know, just flying back and forth from home to Berlin every single week, basically doing interviews. Going to uh, Shanghai for MSI, they sent me there as the only person because the rest of our team got their visa tonight. So I was just there by all by myself doing all the interviews. A lot of fun during that time and learned a lot, but I think that it didn't have a career path to something else because I could be a journalist, but I didn't, wasn't really feeling it. So I wasn't, right. there's a lot better journalists out there, you know, like that do a lot better job than me. Um, it's very nice of you to say, just to say, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Like so, with, with, with these things, you gotta be fully forthright with yourself yeah. you need to be like all in or i don't want to half as something you know so exactly it could have been fun but at the same time at the end of the year we just decided hey i, I don't want to do it anymore um don't want to do want to do the thing so i just decided okay i need something else you know so along my ride in esports i pretty much made a, made some really good connection with like a lot of business people and friends and i learned a lot about that kind of stuff and then My former manager um, or like analyst who worked with me in Lemon Dogs just contacted me because he has been representing players, uh, agent. And he was like, yo, I need someone in Europe, you know, like, do you want to help me out? Do we want to build something up? You know, I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I was just done with my career at uh, the Square Esports. So I was like, yo, what are we doing? You know, what am I going to do next? I don't want to do this influencer thing anymore. I want to do more of business. So I was talking to like a lot of people and I was like, man, so many people got screwed over in esports, you know, I want to try to change that. So. I got screwed over in like a lot of my teams, you know, before. So I was like, I need to change this, you know? So I was like, okay, let me try this and help. And we developed like a pretty good network of people and we helped out a lot of players. And then we turned it into something else, like a business. And then that business probably led to the like prime talent, which was like my own company. And then basically we joined Press X after like eight months of working together. Press X is like something bigger that is now UTA, but we can talk about that probably later. So in, in, the, in the first kind of moments where you did, so what made you realize that what you wanted to do was help the players? I mean, this whole situation with like MYM, you know, if you remember with Corey. What was that? I can't remember. Oh, there was something that I can't remember what it was. Dude, there was so many, there's so many things that people don't really hear about that players get screwed over. Even today. I mean, even, even today. today which even is today like, it's really bad. Yeah. Especially with Fortnite, like just talking about Fortnite, it's crazy to me that some of these kids are signing contracts for like three, four years on zero salary, you know? It's like they're forced into contracts or like telling them, hey, this is like a good chance. I mean, that's probably not even legal. Like, let's just be honest. So three four, three, four years. I mean, even like short, I mean, this is the thing with like people. It, that's why I, I like paying everybody, right? Because yeah. when you don't pay somebody, like not only that may not be legal, but like what kind of leverage do you have? Like how, how can you tell somebody to improve at what he's doing if you're paying that person zero dollars? Like, what is that? And and some of these you're right. You're like Fortnite actually yeah. is, is a is a landmine of shit, uh, left crazy, and right man. because it's like the mainstream thing. Yeah. And a lot of new people coming in, and also a lot of old people try to yeah. become relevant through Fortnite without cash, yeah. without capital, and then they just do whatever, right? Yeah, I mean it's crazy. I'm helping out this uh, German guy who contacted me. He is probably like the number one Fortnite stream, like one of the best Fortnite streamers, Resuru. Yeah, yeah, we, we we spoke, and I was just like helping him out to like represent him and everything every time i got looped into a conversation the organization ran so which tells me that hey ah, for sure it's yeah. like you don't even want to have the conversation with someone in the middle there because which you tells you a lot just, already you just ra rather maneuver like around it and yeah. go to like the next best person that you can sign on the bill so amen for I me it's just i think just <clears throat> especially with fortnite right now it just shows me that there's a lot of need for for representation you know so Yeah. You know, in a previous podcast we made was with uh, Sir Scoots. Mm -hmm. You watched part of parts of that, part of right? It, yeah. Um, and and we we touched upon this topic of um, kind of players getting screwed over and things like that. And and <clears throat> I know many of my direct competitors are not happy that I speak about this, yeah. but I've always been very open about. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I've been a former player. And I, the last thing I want is my players to think that I'm, I'm another corporate shell that is trying to, you know, <clears throat> take advantage over yeah. them. So for me, it's also a differentiator, right? So I don't care that they get mad. But the truth is that we, you know, we spoke about this with Search Goods, and it was so, uh, uh, it was so clear to me that many of the uh, issues that you see today between teams and players 
are issues because there's not enough structure yeah. in place. Um, let me explain you something. So let me give you an example, right? Um, there was this problem with T the TSM player, uh, you remember, right? Uh, Sean Garris, uh, EPA, TSM. PA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's very easy to, if you're on, if you're a fan side by the player, mm -hmm. and if you're uh, somebody that works in the corporate environment to side by the team. Yeah. Because both of them, and this is the, the beauty of, hum of human nature, everybody yeah. uh, uh, tries to rationalize everything. You can actually find reasons why one of them is right or one the other, For sure, yeah. right? But if you look at this from even a deeper kind of level, uh, you realize that the problem is the lack of structure. Yeah. Because why does a player need to screw over a team sometimes, which they do sometimes? Uh, well, it's because the, the variables of the industry are so chaotic that everybody's trying to survive. And whenever they have the chance to increase their survival chances, yeah. they will do that, right? Doesn't matter what, like they will sacrifice integrity to increase their chances of survival. And same happens with teams. You know, they get, we teams get screwed over so hard sometimes. Yeah. And, and why is that? Because sometimes it lacks structure. And that's why many, many of my colleagues try to take advantage as much yeah. as they can from the situation and squeeze every player as much as they can, which leads to issues like this, right? So who's right and who's wrong? It's hard to tell. What I know for certain is that agents appearing is of yeah, you can name yeah, prices will go up. That's a matter of fact. So what? Instead of signing a player for one year, you will actually sign him for four. Yep. Uh, with a with a deal that yeah, it may be hurting you a little bit, but the four year deal will allow you to sell sponsorships on four year periods. Yep. You know, instead of year over year, which leads you to better revenue, better kind of uh, you know uh, backbone on your company and things like that. All these things are completely uh, ignored when teams are automatically uh, scared of agents. Yeah. And this is the, th I wish teams would think this way more because then we'll be past the current point. Yeah, I mean, we have sat on opposite tables, so you know, like yeah. I was actually, so whenever there's player negotiation, you wanna like, <clears throat> obviously I wanna have the best interest at my heart, but yeah, I think for Europe, I can only speak like, I mean, I've seen Europe and North America as one of the few people, so, I work on a lot of European things while also living in North America right now yep. and getting everything there. North America is like light years ahead for yep. professionalism, how orcs deal with agents, like every player okay. like wants an agent, but they still like looking for the right fit, you know? But Europe, it's definitely the only two people that I like really, like that live here in Europe that I really respected from like just talking to them was like you and Khan, you know? And surprisingly, both <laughs> are ex-players. So yep. for me, it just... It Karn, by like, the way, is, so Karn is the is the, he's the CGO of Fnatic, so head he does, of gaming in Fnatic, and yeah. and uh, in the, me, I'm, I'm yeah. So just like just talking to you guys, I just like showed that you guys have so much empathy towards players, which actually led in. It's so easy to do business, right? And that's coming back to my point that I think if you if you were in the shoes of the player before and you had like you went in like a different path of business, you have like a view that no one else has, right? So that's that's probably like my unique viewpoint as well as an agent that I've been. And exactly those shoes where people are right now, like five or four years ago, and now I can bring something to the table that no one else can write. I know exactly how they feel. Yep. I know what they want, you know, so I can totally relate. I think that this is like pretty much like one of my most important things that I picked up along the way, you know. And yeah, I think in Europe, um, aid, like people and teams are super scared of agents because they don't want to deal with it. Obviously, they they think, oh, man, like. A, like prices are going up you know this is not sustainable our system's gonna crash you know in the end i think it's only their own fault for organization if they're not sustainable and it may happen but it would it have happened happen, right it would have happened regardless it would have happened regardless because like, we're in such a bubble and i think the streaming world and everything is just accelerating the growth from esports like by an expansion exponential um degree right so it would have happened regardless with or without agents so i think agents are just there to bring a lot of structure into the place and help our players make sure that they make the best decision of their life. Mm -hmm. And also if, if you really embrace it, it can help you out too. You know, like I can do damage control. Of course. I can do like a lot of stuff. I can good agent will players. never allow a player to trash talk a team after sure. he leaves. Yeah. Good, good agent will never allow a player to not fulfill his list of deliverables. Like the marketing, 100%. marketing necessities that every team has things like this, which by the way, many, many players today don't care about. Like players, some players, and I've worked and to some degree still work with some of those, still believe 
that oh i'm a player i just play the game yep. you know i flick here i flick there boom boom yeah. headshot here headshot there and <clears throat> that's it that's that's what that's my job well let me tell you something no like it's more you know you have fans for two reasons one because you win and two because i mean because you're good at the game right or two because you're marketable slash uh, entertaining slash whatever you want to make it right um and and you need to have both things especially when you don't win every game which is never right you never yep. win every game nobody does yep. so uh, you need to have that other part which is like that is the the, the marketing slash pr uh, area is the backbone of your career literally nothing like not even how well you play yep. is more important than pr nothing i mean i think um in terms of like salaries and everything <laughs> You don't have to be the best player to earn the most money. I think if you are someone yeah. who who really gets it, who has like a business sense, bro, um, I wasn't the best player. Like, I mean, I, I, you I, made millions selling scarves, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I was not the best player, and I embraced this. You know, I was very good yeah. at some point. I, by the yeah. way, was I easy to gank? Huh? You you were younger. Was I easy to gank? Dude, I still remember that one game. You played TF. I played Javan. And oh no, that's, that's a, that the, was... that already started wrong. I was like this. Okay, so I ganked you level six, and then. I killed you again, and after the game, you came up to me. It's like, yo, bro, what the fuck? Are you timing my flashes? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I was like, yo, of course I'm timing your flashes, you know? It's like, so yeah, that was the one fun thing. So, uh, I think yeah, what, like, at that point, nobody time flashes. What no the fuck one... are you doing, Dexter? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you don't just time flashes when I'm trying to have fun here in the middle with TS. Yeah, no, I think. In solo queue as well. He was that's, timing that's my flashes. True. That's not true. I never time flashes in solo queue. Oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, it's. Uh, I think me and Nuklek were really good, and at that time when we played, I don't think anyone was hard to gank. I think we were just like stomping two and two, everything mid lane in Europe. Yep. And yep. yeah, I thought f f when we played, we had just we we understood the meta that well that I don't think that we had like any issues ganking anyone. So we we needed timings, and Nuklek was very good at like managing the wave, and he knew exactly. Okay, level three here in two twenty seconds. Let's do this, you know. So he was like a really good leader in that regard. So I think uh it was super easy for me to yep. to gank you you know so so anyhow um uh, my take on this is you know i for a period of time i was really really good yeah no, no doubt about it but at no point was i as good as faker to be in the position of faker yep. pr wise and i was yep. so that tells you and just from own experience i'm telling you like pr is everything everything and and you know pr means also kind of how you communicate with the fans like i don't know you, you, you probably have seen in tournaments that we've played like i was taking pictures and until the last person wouldn't just go like yep. the, the, i would still stay there for some reason you know and that kind of thing is what drives that love for the player yep. and players are losing are losing that a little bit and you don't want them to lose that that's the, yeah. and the agent's job among others is to make sure he gets grounded and understands that aspect right yeah i think people always tell me so so why was clg europe so big in europe and why is no other team becoming that popular anymore you know i don't think people understand that what they did when everyone when we were like touring around road trips and everything people don't understand they spent four to five hours each event each day on top of playing the game just signing things you know yep. and this just was like a snowball effect right so they did this at every event they talk to their friends it's like hey this guy is so cool you should talk yep. like watch him out like check him out and everything and i think that's like missing a bit right so yep. we, we have these fan meetings like at the lcs right now and it just feels like a bit more impersonal than what it used to be you know it's which true. is i think <clears throat> streams kind of replace that feeling though so whenever you have a pretty popular streamer you tune in because you like him and it's kind of like a one-sided friendship right yep. um but yeah i think that part was like one of the biggest reasons why CLGU was so, they were such PR machines, you know, like Crepo, Snoopy, obviously. And then you had Froggen, he was like really good at the time. So I think that team was just like, like you said, PR was like super important and they became so big that everyone was like super successful, right? I love that, yeah. I love that. Well, I, I think some, I mean, Reckless pretty much understands this very well. Reckless, I mean, he's good at the game, but he's uh, incredibly marketable. Yeah. He. Uh, that's very well. I mean, he knows what to post, when to post it is good. Um, well, what would happen if Reckless would play for G2 right now? What would you do with him? Like, oh my a, God. Organization I mean, standpoint, what could you do with him? Just, it would be pretty interesting for me to know. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, first of all, the, the way we approach this is we look at the players we have and look at what they, what makes them different, right? Yeah. Uh, or unique rather. 
And then any content piece we create or any social media stuff we do, we try to adapt to that player's image. Mm -hmm. But it's tough because sometimes we have our own, I mean, we have our own image of what we want to portray, right? And many, many times we want to be kind of the, 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 a mix between Deadpool and Tony Stark sometimes, like yeah. super banter-ish. And so, and maybe the player is not like that, right? Uh, if it's Jankos, it's perfect. If it's Jankos or Perks, then we have it. There's a, it's a done deal or, or what yeah. it. Yeah. But um, sometimes it's not the case. And then you have to cater to that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, because not, not every time you can pick up the good players that are also the ones that fit into your brand kind of image. It's really tough. Um, but with Reckless, I think um, he's probably, he seems, he portrays um, no banter at all. Like yeah. he never banters, right? It's like a slick, it's like a slick character. It's like a, it's like a, the, the untouchable character, That's I right? Think, I was thinking like he's, he's untouchable. You know? Yeah, like, he's like untouchable, yeah. but that, that also has negative aspects to it. Yeah, true. The negative aspects is that people don't feel like they can ever speak to him. And that makes him non-relatable which as a result uh, makes him in that area yeah. less, less valuable, right? So it has ups and downs, um, but he's the kind of guy that enjoys doing content. So things yeah. would be fun. And maybe even I feel like we could help him become a little bit more edgy, which would help him a lot. Like uh, probably reach and engagement will go up by 40% for him if he would be a little bit more edgy. Yeah, I mean, I think he he's the face of European LCS, right? Like, yeah, yeah. There's him and Perks. Yeah. Perks, and I think Jankos. Is Jankos like the third. for sure. Yeah. yeah, but Jankos is like a, for me, Jankos is like independent. Like Jankos is not even LCS. Jankos is just <laughs> yeah. a goofy, a goofy guy that is around there, and he just does whatever he wants. Yeah. Doesn't care about. He bends the rules. Whatever is understood as normal. Yeah. He will go around it and just dance around. It, he will sometimes do things that you're like. Uh, okay, that's borderline cringe. Okay, that's definitely cringe. But the way he does it, <laughs> he embraces it, so it's not actually not cringe. Yeah. <clears throat> he's like he he's full of that. He's just happy, yeah. you know. He's just happy doing his thing. I love that people. I really do. I mean, Jankos is among uh, yeah. the best guys I've ever worked with PR wise. And he, he, doesn't, he doesn't even think proactively about this shit. He just has fun. It's just so cool. Like off camera. I'm just there with them, and he just yeah. keeps making jokes and keeps being goofy. You know, yeah. I love that. I really love that kind of people. Apex is actually a little bit like that. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that uh, we are uh, unfortunately unable to keep him in the lineup yeah. uh, for competitive reasons. But PR wise, is amazing. Always, all the time, making jokes and dancing and singing. I love that shit. Yeah. Uh, actually, connecting to the topic of player salaries going up. Um, yeah. It, so, my, my thoughts on this is, I mean, my thoughts <clears throat> on this are um, a team, a, a, sp a sports team <clears throat> is not a venture that typically profits a lot. Sure not. Like, you look at traditional sports, like, you can profit, <laughs> you can get good margins on the business if you're uh, tanking the season, which makes you lose a lot of fans. So, it's not, it's, it's not really a long-term yeah. Kind of a good idea, right? So if you tank a decision, you, you will definitely profit. Uh, or if you're a gigantic brand like Real Madrid, for example, you will definitely profit. But still, the margins are not the best. Yeah. Like maybe Real Madrid can profit 20% max. Like we're talking like max. Um, anyhow, what you learn is that sport teams are not m meant to be very profitable. Yeah. You want to break even, for sure. You don't want to be raising money forever. Yeah but they're not profitable. And as a result of that, uh, many teams are right now, it is a gold rush right now. And you feel it not only in teams, but also in <clears> other <throat> esports. I mean, you yeah. guys got bought out, right? By, by UTA. Um, it's just a, it's a byproduct of this esports phenomenon becoming mainstream, right? Yeah. And, and, and this leads to a lot of private capital coming into the space, which as a result makes um, in this case, teams, mm. I mean, you, investors want that money to be put at work because otherwise they will just invest it in stock yeah. and just have, you know, a, a decent uh, uh, return. But they come in, into esports, among other reasons, we're going to want to make a lot of money very yeah. fast. And how do you do that? By increasing market share, which you only do by investing that money, by actually using the money. And then you look at esports teams, right? What can you do to spend that money? 
well, you know, it, if it was a hardware company, it's a very cash incentive business, then you will, you know, tool in R and D, whatever, right? Yeah. A lot of money. But esports, where is most of it going? To players, undeniably. It's yeah. how it works, right? So as a result of all those dynamics, which you already know, all these dynamics I just mentioned, salaries go up, right? So what do you think comes next in order to get closer to profitability? And by the way, if I see today one team that makes money, I think this team is being run poorly. If it makes money? Yeah, if it actually profits. If, it, if, a, team, if, a, if a team today makes money. makes money, like profits, yeah. it's being run poorly because it's losing an opportunity to increase market share. Yeah, yeah I think market share is the most important thing of um, esports, the audience. I mean, we know, so, so except for like the pro player representation that I do, we at Press X slash UTA now, we work with like a lot of brands and influencers, right? So we are building offline TV, basically, we have I'm a cutie pie, we have all these like big Twitch, we have like the 1% of Twitch, right, that we work with. And we have a lot of conversation with brands. So market share is like everything in esports right now, whereas why you see a game, uh, like a, a brand like Steel Series is losing its grip, right? They... They're losing money, like they're losing market share to like really big players that are coming in with like a lot of cash. They're, and they're not doing everything. anything. Like, they're not doing anything right now. So brands that we talk to and just in general, like the whole vibe is everyone wants to get market share, right? Everyone needs to spend on marketing and everything. So yeah, it's the same for like esports clubs, right? You want to get the best players. You want to build the fan bases. But I think what a lot of teams fail to like realize too is that, you know, I always think that in League of Legends right now, especially like in Europe, the the sum of like the team is the five players, right? So you can take five players from like some of the bottom teams, put them in another team, and there's no difference, right? So if you don't build any brand equity with that player, then you're losing out, right? Yeah. So you're losing opportunities, which is why why I think like a lot of teams are in a pretty bad position right now. And um, like you said, market shares everything. So for salaries, it's normal that they go up because the most branded players, the best players that make you win the the game and the league they're increasingly like in salaries. So it's like just a normal process, right? But you see the same thing in like sports as well, you know? Just look at uh, LeBron James, right? His new contract that he signed. This is just a normal thing. And I don't think why it should How much be. was in total? It was one of 40, 154, 54 million over four years. Is that including um, bonuses and things like that? I, I don't know. I just know, I'm not too much into like, I just know the number, um, but it's normal that it's gonna occur in esports, right? That the players are gonna make like a lot of money because in the end, like you said, it's actually a pretty interesting concept that if you make money, you're losing opportunity, you know? No one thought about it, but it's actually true, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> you could be... Um, okay, and, the, and the reason is because esports grows at a very fast pace. That is the only reason. Yeah. If esports would be growing at a normal pace, not overly accelerating, just, st uh, um, just uh, stable, yeah. then um, not breaking even, it would be a, would be a mistake. Because then every time you raise money, you're not exponentially increasing the company valuation because yeah. the industry itself is not moving. But here, the industry itself moving. So um, uh, the tights raise, all boats, how do you call it? Tights, tights go up, all boats raise, something like that. Yeah. And uh, even if you do a bad job today, you can still maybe survive. Yeah. Which is baffling to me that some of these companies that I read sometimes are getting funding with such bad business models and such bad, just bad management teams and bad just not a good company overall. Yep. Um, uh, but 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 yeah, it's, this is this is the way I think. Um, you have to be aggressive right now, and you have to be fast, nimble, know where to get in, know where to get out. Uh, right now, for example, this this Fortnite phenomenon, right? Everybody, everybody, is just looking at Fortnite right now. Yeah. And I have a theory. When you're looking at numbers, in other words, like monthly active users or yeah. number of viewers. When you're looking at numbers to define whether a game, whether you should get in a game or not, you're already lost. Because everybody else is looking at numbers. Yeah, You have to be able to digest the data that gets you to understand what's going to be the next big game, right? And, and otherwise you're already lost, simple. Yeah. And if you're right now you try to get into Fortnite, everything is overpriced as shit. Yeah. Either you build a, a streamer yourself, which requires a lot of micromanaging, and good for you. If you build a streamer like this, yeah. the same way Samit, one of our investors, built um, Dr. Disrespect or helped helped build Dr. Disrespect, yeah. literally placed into a room and given him a lot of tools to grow, and six months after, boom, yeah. you know, then good for you. But that's rare to see, first of all. 
And, and chances are you may never find that one kind of streamer you want to build, right? So you have to get a, a, an already existing streamer with decent viewer base. Yeah. And right now, the dollar per viewer you pay is too high. Especially oh, if, sure. he's, if he does Fortnite, it's far too high. Way too high. Um, so that's a challenge when, when the game is already big. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, so I think um, what I noticed, what I like a lot of teams are doing right now is they're building up like a lot of inventory to sell with streamers. What What is your take on it? Like, what, what do you think of um, pro players don't have as much media value as like a big streamer, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you balance it out? Like, do you just go only the esports route? But I think in our like current state of esports, I think if you're not going through like the influencer route in some way that you're missing out on so much opportunity. Right. And so here, here's the right? challenge I see. The challenge I see is that influencers, so first of all, yes, teams should have influencers mm -hmm. on top of uh, competitors. Um, well, it depends. Let me actually get back. It depends on the vision of the team, right? For me, the vision of G2 Esports is to become or to be uh, the most entertaining organization on earth, right? Entertaining entails winning, losing, storylines, drama, crying, smiling, documentaries, uh, fucking movies, eventually, yeah. right? That is what my uh, job is to me. And and of course, that also entails streamers, yeah. influencers in general. However, the, the putting together a group of streamers um, is tough because the, the standards of those streamers are those of treating you like a sponsor when you are a team, right? Yeah. They only just treat you like a sponsor and that's not how it works. Yeah. Uh, we want actual natural interactions. We want them to feel as if they really want to be G2, yeah. which is what the competitors show to the market. Yeah. And, and that's really tough to find because somebody that is self-made, he, that a streamer that has 20,000 viewers, let's, let's take Lyric, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, Cole Carnage or one of these guys, they don't need teams for anything like no. what would they need teams for <clears throat> they're self-sufficient yep. they're already monetized through sponsorships they already monetized through donations and subscriptions and yada 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 we are counterproductive to them yeah um which as a result leads me to the, to the same topic probably the only way out for teams to um to build these influencers teams is by building them from zero yeah. and having mechanisms in the contract that allow us to renew them forever, which is fair if you build somebody, as long as the guy wants to grow. I mean, renew them from forever, not the same money. I'm talking about fair terms, right? Fair terms, yeah. Um, I think that's fair. And we, we have heard many times about Ninja and Luminosity, right? They have this right of first refusal in the contract. And and, and I, I, I can't remember exactly when Luminosity picked up Ninja, right? But the truth is, if you as Luminosity uh, pick up a streamer before anybody else understands that streamer is good, yeah, and you have that right of first refusal in there, um, at the end of the day, right of first refusal means that as long as you keep mark, uh, you pay market terms, market yeah. fair terms, you can keep the player. For sure, that's fair <clears throat> to me. That is fair to me. You're not killing anybody. You're literally just making sure that the player gets compensated according. Right. As long as, and you know, the, the contracts, of course, have, if the team fucks up or whatever, you can, I mean, there are yeah. always ways to terminate, but um, for me, that's fair. And that's, for me, the only way for esports teams to build influencer groups. And then, actually, that's not true. That's way number one. And then way number two would be to be incredibly creative with a show. Yeah. <clears throat> right? A show that... I have something in mind, but I don't want to, and, and it's, it's always stupid to share, uh, not to course, share ideas because yeah. I don't, it's all about execution, but I have a couple of ideas that I want to put, put together. And, and I think that could be kind of the, the path, owning a show, yeah. which is more important than the influencers themselves. And then people will fight to be part of that show. That is probably the, the way. Yeah. I mean, we build pretty much like we help them build offline TV, which is kind of like everyone wants to be part of it. Yeah. Even if you take like one or two people out of the occasion, it's still like a collective that is yeah. like so strong. So I think the same thing would happen with offline TV can be applied to like an organization, yeah, 100%. right? 100%. So I think um, 
the two teams in Fortnite, especially that I think are super interesting, are like FaZe and TSM. Yeah. I think they have built this team culture that, hey, I want to be in the no scope clan phase, you know, I want to be a TSM. Yeah. I think they've done a really good job of building. Like TSM was the first mover in Fortnite by far. They land gripped everyone <clears throat> and good on them, you know. I think it was perfect. It was, they did like textbook, you know, they did everything. I blame perfect. myself, you know, every time I speak with investors and partners. Yeah. And and I blame myself because I'm I'm like I should I should have been that person you know should, yeah I, I should have been Andy did fucking well I don't know if it's Andy or Lina or I don't know who but um they certainly did right yeah, and, and, and I'm uh, glad for them Lina Lina does like a really yeah. good job there um, so so good, good good for Lina I mean I and I think she's amazing by the way like the stuff she's she's created a culture in TSM of actually sharing social media and doing stuff like that Bjorsen was not like he is today before he joined oh, TSM. For sure not. So good, good for Lina, good for TSM, really. And it solved for TSM a problem they had before, which was that they were too one-dimensional and too yeah. reliant on League of Legends. Every venture in like a different game kind of failed for them. So yeah. now that Fortnite is out, they solved all their organization's problems, right? So yeah, yeah it's crazy to me to think that... And that's like, beautiful. I mean, it's good, unlike yeah. in traditional sports where, where you can just sit back and relax, everybody is in constant survival mode. Yeah. And everybody's like trying to find the next thing. And I, I love that because it means open market. And open market means that the best team will win more often. Yeah. Uh, so I, I enjoy that. Then you will, the, the fact that this is open market will likely make you see the same five teams in the next 20 years to be relevant. Maybe yeah. those teams own different brands, which is the case today. Sure. Uh, uh, but, and, and, and I think I have a pretty good idea of who these teams will be, actually. I think after understanding, after learning. Yeah the structures of his team, each team, and uh, the cultures of those of those teams, I think I have a pretty good idea of who these teams will be. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's fun. Like, it just means that we are better at executing whenever new game pops. Like, yeah. in e I like to say, in esports, when I, you know, you watched uh, Interstellar? Yeah. One of my, one of my favorite it's movies, great, yeah. by the way. Uh, when they are in this uh, planet, that one hour is like what it was in one year or no no was one hour was 10 years something 10 years like that there, yeah. in 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 the earth and and this feels to me the same way like <laughs> one hour in east was like 10 years in real life so much shit happening everywhere unbelievable yeah there's so many teams popping out of nowhere especially with like overwatch league now you have like what 20 like you're gonna have like so many more teams and all of them they enter Overwatch League and all of them want to enter the other games to like increase their market share too. So you have all these different games pop up, all the different organizations, and then everyone is like rushing for like the same new game, which is, if you think about it, it's kind of crazy, right? That no other industry has that kind of like overlap and yep. so many people come together, which is why I think that esports in like the next three to five years is just going to completely go through the roof, you know? The next game after Fortnite, whatever that might be, will be even bigger probably, you know, than Fortnite, yeah, which is... 100%. League and of Legends was their first, then it became kind of like PUBG, but they never like did the next step, but Fortnite... Yeah, actually uh, Bluehole mismanaged that a little bit, yeah. unfortunately. I feel like it could have been so much more. Mm -hmm. Now it's a Chinese mostly kind of game, right? And yeah, China carries over, I mean carries, but... And, and I think they can still fix it, by the way. I think they can. I think PUBG can still be fixed in the For Western sure. world. Uh, um, it needs investment and yeah. good people. So I have a really interesting like thought process that I just like have been thinking like this last week. Um, for By the way, I was about to call Blue Hole Blue Balls only Blue because uh, <laughs> because Dr. Disrespect said it a few times yeah. and it just stuck in my mind. So uh, it's just funny. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it's Blue Hole by the way. <laughs> so League of Legends has been around for like eight years right now, right? Um, yeah. Oh, but yeah, a little bit more, I think. Nine? Nine years? Nine it has years? to be nine, ten, yeah. Nine, nine ten. So when we were kids, 15, 16 year olds, we grew up with the game. Now we're like 24, 25. We no longer, no longer have time to like play all day. I was playing soccer man, by then, I remember. Yeah? yeah? But either way, all these new kids are going to play Fortnite right now because it's like, first it was League of Legends, then the new kids played Minecraft, Minecraft like Fortnite replaced Minecraft. Yeah. In Riot's shoes right now, especially for you as a, as a European LCS owner, how do you solve the problem of getting new players to care about the game that much mm, that they would actually translate question. into? Because I think that's like the league's biggest problem right now in the West. That you need to create new players that care so much about the game mm -hmm. and put them in a position where they actually care about esports, yeah. right? To in increase I, I, viewership. I, I love this conversation. Um, so if I am Riot, I'm not saying I am smarter. I, yeah. I, they are geniuses. 
For sure. They're literally geniuses. And remember, League of Legends is still today the largest esport on the planet. Yeah. Period. With that said, um, if I'd be Riot Games, um, first of all, it's important to understand how learning curves work. Um, a game like Fortnite, this is the graph, right? Yeah. And this is this is time, and this is kind of learning, right? Skill ceiling, yeah. Skill ceiling. Yeah. And Fortnite is like this, right? Yeah. Which means the easier the game is in the first 10 hours-ish, the easier it is to acquire new players. Because, hey, man, you, I checked this game. Oh, my God, check it out. Let's yeah. play, blah, blah, you know? Uh, mouth to mouth marketing and like, and you combine that with cartoonish graphics, which are very friendly for the eye, and you have uh, a lighter version of League of, a much lighter version of yeah. League of Legends, and the game succeeded. Good place, right time, whatever you want to say. Uh, now look at the skill sailing of Counter Strike, right? Yep. Yeah. Again, graph, and you have time, and you have skill sailing. And the learning curve is more like this, yeah. right? It's very long. <clears throat> and the longer the learning curve, the, the, the better the user retention. Yeah. So perhaps you have lower number of users, but they will play for much longer and yeah. they will not get bored. Fucking Counter-Strike has been around for how many years, Dajo? It's like 14? You can talk. <laughs> 14. 14? I think 14-ish. I so, mean, Counter-Strike... Probably more like 20 or something. If you 1.1 version and everything. Because I've, yeah. I've been playing so for 40 28. years. Counter Strike was my first yeah, it's game. It's like 16 years. I think it's, it's 16 it's years. It's closer to 20, I think, than. No, no, no. Think. Because I was, I was 11 years. Right. I'm 28 right now. And I was 11. And my dad came home uh, with this game is amazing. I, play, I will play yeah. with my co workers today. And it's new. And that was Counter Strike, actually. Mm. 18 years. Okay. So it, I was 10, 11 years of age then. I doesn't remember that. So 18 years, okay? Counter Strike. And and if people still play it, and you may this, you may uninstall it today. I promise you you will install it at some point in the future. Sure. I'm hundred percent sure. At some point you will have, you know, the feeling of playing again because the game is so deep. Yeah. There's just so much to learn. Probably the 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 learning curve is infinite, <clears throat> pro like close to infinite. Yeah. Like you can all like in this game where uh, the hitbox is so small and so accurate, yeah. right? I mean, it's, I know it's not, but it, you know, combined with the recoil of the weapons and things like that, make the game almost impossible to be played perfect at. Like you have to have aimbot to play perfect, right? Yeah. You can always get better at aiming, you can always get better at X, Y, Z. Um, and that is what makes the game have long, 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 long life. And yeah, it will never be, the most played game. It yeah. will never be the game that peaks in terms of active users, but it will be the game that will always be relevant. Yeah. Now, I think Fortnite is in the other side of the spectrum, right? Fortnite is a game that I don't know if three years from now will be um, where it is today. It would be unrealistic to think, yeah. right? <clears throat> um, so now talking about League of Legends, I think League of Legends is right in between. And that is a strength for League of Legends, right? Because people still don't play the game perfectly. To this day for sure not. and it's yeah. like nine years after right yeah. that tells you a lot so if i were riot games now connecting the dots with your question if i were riot games i'd make sure that i cater to those people that have been playing the game for very long as opposed to new people new people will undeniably get to play the game whenever you have a compelling enough esports product because you know they will see games that are fun shoutcasters that are fun and they will see players that do incredible things and they will want to do what they do, right? But only then. You will not get new players. It's really tough to get today new players to play League of Legends by seeing the, an ad on a banner on the road. Yeah. Really, really hard, right? Oh. Uh, people already know the game and if they haven't played it, it's because it's not the cup of tea. So what you need to do is to make sure that whatever stream you put together, production quality, everything around it, stadium, whatever, is so fucking good. Yeah. that it makes people want to install that game to see what it is all about. You understand? So if I were yeah, yeah, Riot, yeah. I would not even double down, like triple down on production quality, showcaster quality, stadium size, um, making sure that the teams that are part of the league are just gloriously fucking good, you know? And that make fans have goosebumps. That is my answer. 
So you think it's pretty interesting because if you go like through like the evol like evolution of league, the league was there and then they built esports. But you think that esports is gonna carry and attract new viewers, right? That's what of you think. Of course, esports yeah. is gonna carry and attract new viewers. And if I you're you're new to esports, okay? You're new to esports. Hey man, so I heard this thing. My son, he told me something about esports. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. Then chances are the first game you will ever hear about is League of Legends. Oh, oh watch. Yeah, one of the two probably. Whatever, right? And the amount of money that Blizzard uh, probably spent on marketing is incredibly high. So you probably will hear about Overwatch <laughs> as well. Um, but chances are you will hear about League of Legends, right? Yeah. And that moment alone is a potential. That moment alone creates a potential customer. Um, that's a focus on making it the best leagues you can. So. At the end of the day, how many people play American football that watch NFL? It has to be a, it has to be a really low percentage, like a really, well, really yeah, low I mean, percentage. It's, it's going down, right? But year by year. Probably. I mean, but viewers of NFL, like everybody watches Super Bowl. Yeah. I will make a wild guess, okay? I will say ninety-five percent, and I'm saying I think I'm being pessimistic. Ninety-five yeah. percent of people that watch have never, ever played American football. Perhaps not even touch one of these yeah. ball, this oval balls. Probably, yeah. How do you call that ball? That, that that football? How do you call that? It's a football, right? It's a football, yeah. Yeah, for them it's a football, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, which tells you, right, that maybe the business for Riot is actually to make sure that esports, the League of Legends is an esport, stays there forever. And there will always be players, man. And there will, there will always be players. There will always be a bronze. Yeah league where bad people will play and when riot feels like bronze is not enough for those that are come new yeah. then there will be a wood <laughs> a wood league you know yeah. where all the people that are just new are fighting each yeah. other and they have fun that's why matchmaking is so important which by the way fortnite does not have that's yeah so um i feel like people are overreacting so much over everything I, i've been for here sure. for 14 years and i've seen you we have seen um not games as large as Fortnite, but we have seen similar instances in yeah. which games have come and go, right? And with similar attributes to the game. And this could be one of those cases too. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it will be. Yeah. If it if it if I'm wrong, then I will be the first time wrong about this. Mm -hmm. Which I would be gladly be. But you know? Yeah, eSports is kinda of, kind of like in a weird spot for Fortnite right now. I think it's uh Yeah, because it, it's and I'm sorry, I, I I love speaking, but you're making so nice oh, questions, man. It seems like you're just keep talking, you know. It's like that's amazing. Yeah. So, um, the fact that so right now you see Ninja, right? He has one hundred twenty-eight thousand viewers or whatever, right? Good for him. The kid is amazing um, at the game. The he's you can see he's actually a good human being. Like he does charity work. He doesn't get you know he's he's still grounded he's trying to um speak uh you know better without you know with less cursing because he knows there's kids watching and like for me like he, he, he tells me very good things about him but now let's be completely realistic here what are the chance how many players that fortnite have like a hundred million ish something yeah, yeah. how <laughs> like this is this is an interesting question how many people do you think exist that are better than Ninja? I will tell you already. Thousands. Thousands, yeah, for sure. Th you just don't know any of them. But thousands of them. Now, they cannot play in these invitationals. They're nobody. They have yeah. 12 <laughs> fans on Twitter. And one of them is their best friend. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, uh, it, may, it may as well be a Spanish guy that nobody heard about. Yeah. But there's no matchmaking system. Ninja is playing against somebody that installed the game yesterday and has and the closest he has been to to a game has been Pac-Man like 20 years ago you know yeah. that's the truth so whenever there's matchmaking if there ever is which there should be the, it should be the case unless they be. want the game to implode uh, then you'll see you know all these other guys coming in and yeah. maybe streaming uh, and then it's like rebirth of the of Fortnite. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of weird just looking at the competitive scene. I'm just trying to get in, 
just like new players popping up left and right and you don't really know who to go for and then all these tournaments are pretty much like invite only whereas like you get invited it kind of creates like this new version of esports where it's considered esports but in the end it's not the highest level of competition where True. in other games you have it with lcs you know that there's a path to pro overwatch has a path to pro all the other games i think riot games does, does that quite well actually yeah I, for sure i mean they've been doing that the best but yeah in fortnite it's kind of weird that whenever we look from like an agency standpoint we only look at numbers we don't look how good someone is because mm -hmm. first of all all these people that nobody knows there's so much research that goes into it and we don't have the time to do it because yeah, for sure. we go for like the numbers that's right? our job not your that's, job right? that's all that's your job i mean if i pick up someone like a superstar good on me you know and then i can sell them probably to you but um <laughs> it's fast it's just like a numbers game so i think it's just in a weird spot right now where you have this this new esport version of you invite like a bunch of people together and it just carries numbers right so i don't know how sustainable that business model is because at the end of the day just you just invite all your favorite YouTubers in a tournament, but the competition is not where it should be at the yep. highest level. So that's people want to watch the very best. They want to watch very the very best. best. So for me, it just feels a and bit also, of a thing. Yeah, and, and also, of course, the ninjas of the world. But And, and that is still esports, <clears throat> because for me, what esports is, is video game competition. And you can have video game competition yeah, sure. between influencers too, but it's not the highest level competition, period. Yeah. Um, this has been a, this is so far has been an amazing talk actually I'm yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, why don't we have a production? Can we have a a five minute break so that we can have some water and go to the yeah. restroom? That's awesome. Uh, well, guys, we'll see you in five minutes. Stay here, get some water, get some Doritos, get some Mountain Dew, and uh, yeah, see you in five minutes. Hello everybody, we're back, and I'm here of course with Dexter. You're, by the way, um, I'll be honest, you are the least German German I know. You're actually... I spent too much time in America. There you go. You're a, seven an Americanized <laughs> German. Where are you right now? In LA? Uh, LA, yeah. I just moved to LA seven months ago. How do you like that? Weather is good. Um, Esports is good. You know, everything is good. Except traffic. Oh, traffic is horrible. Terrible there, yeah. Yeah. I, I prefer Berlin. Like, for me, it just... I want to get in the train from A to B, but I don't... So I don't drive. I'm a player. I'm a talent, right? I don't drive. But <laughs> <laughs> all the talent doesn't drive, right? So I've never picked up driving because I was just playing Are you esports. calling me untalented? Talent. like a Are you calling player. me untalented? Because I do drive. You drive? I do drive. When did you learn that? When did I learn that? Yeah, before esports? Oh, yeah, I was 18 years of age, actually. I mean, while esports. I, was... I mean, I know for a fact that a lot of players that play in LCS right now don't know how to drive. Yeah, they don't like, want to They, yeah, they don't want to do it. They're not going to do it. They're just going to cap everywhere, you know? Yeah. Luckily, we have Uber in Los Angeles, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Um, but yeah, I, but you, everything you is should, good. You should, you should do the test. I mean, in the US, Dude, it's pretty it's easy. It's so easy to get, but I should do it. Def should, yeah. Also, in the US, it's like automatic. Like in, in Europe, yeah, it's so easy you to have to do manual, mm -hmm. right? With manual, with the actual like gearbox, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember I did that with... A, <laughs> it's funny. Like, um, I had a Hyundai Atos, right? Uh -huh. uh, which is like one of the worst cars in the history of humanity, right? I learned to, to drive with a Hyundai Atos and it was like, it was like horrible, you know? And then I, I, I did the test with um, Seat, which is a Spanish brand mm -hmm. and it was much more smooth and so on. But um, I remember, this is so off topic, it's unbelievable, but <laughs> I, Go on, man. I remember I realized that I needed glasses because in that, that moment in the exam, like I, I didn't pass the first exam. Yeah. Um, he he told me, uh, go to uh, whatever, I think it's the next stop or whatever, right? Yeah. Or the next exit or whatever. And I missed it because I didn't see it. And then I realized it's because I have I, ha I needed to wear glasses, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when looking afar. And and, and I, missed the, I missed the exit and, and the guy just, just didn't let me pass the exam. What a guy. But the second time it was, it was perfect. Um, Anyway, you should definitely learn how to drive because sure. LA needs that. Like you LA need needs that. that. Yeah. Maybe maybe with like self-driving cars in like three to five years or something. So oh yeah. No. I mean, I, I can't <laughs> wait for that. Like imagine it's like, and at the, at the end of the day, we just we just complaining, uh, right. just to complain because we have cabs, which is pretty much the same thing, right? But just being in a car that drives by itself, that's pretty alpha. You're just doing emails, you know, in your yeah. self-driving car. Siri, uh, bring me to uh, the n nearest uh, supermarket. Yeah. And then Siri, 
will bring you to the supermarket. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, I mean, LA is fine, you know. I think the only reason why I'm there is to work. And I think esports there is so much more developed than in Germany. Like, Germany is like probably 10 years behind in terms of like esports, what happens in LA. I mean, everything is central. We tell all our talent, we move them over. We work on like multiple visas right now for like a lot of people. Um, Frogging just got his approved like yesterday. So we are working on everyone because everyone needs to be in LA. So Frogging, much opportunity. He's still hungry for competition. Yeah, I mean, he's a streamer right now, but he takes it easy. But I think, uh, yeah, if anyone watches from the European LCS, you know, he's, he, he wants to play, you know. Next in year Europe? he's going to play. It doesn't matter where. I think he just wants to like see the best fit. Because I think he has been at a point where he has been from going from the best to like mediocre teams. And then I played with him on Elements. Um, we went seventh place, but he still is like a super amazing player, you know? And then we joined Echo Fox. Yeah, I don't know. Like for me, I remember Frogan was probably the best player in the world I've ever played with, against, actually. And, and maybe some byproduct of the meta changing. I don't know what it is, but he should be. He should be playing. He's... He, should be, he should be higher up in, in, like he should be getting good placements. Much better placements. Yeah, I mean, he got unlucky with not the teams, but I think part of this is flawless too. He's not flawless, right, as a player, but I think he should be a franchise player. He's like probably like the one player that has played for so long that still is not getting tired of league. Like he is having yeah, he loves fun. the game. He loves I've never the game seen in and out. You know, yep. I've never seen someone play so much league and be like so into it. You know, but yeah, that's a different conversation. So, so what do you do in your day? To, like, explain people what do you do in your day to day? Uh, like, like, explain people. What is your morning routine? Or if you're a night person also, that's fine. Like what kind of, how, how does your day look like? Be as specific as you can be. Like talking about what kind of fruits you like to eat at 11.37 a.m. So I wake up at like nine now, which is pretty, pretty For okay. an esports? For esports person, this yeah. is like early morning, 6 a.m. Right? So <laughs> I wake up at nine in the morning, wake up, just chill in bed a bit, like write text and then emails, um, get ready. Work starts at ten. What do you what do you do with the phone? Huh? And what do you do with the phone apart from emails? I just like go to my PC and then write emails. You know. Oh, before. okay. You mean so, in the PC? Yeah, okay. yeah, I go on the PC. Um, phone obviously just social media because I'm still social media addicted like everyone else. You know, just like which is part of reading, your job as well. Reading my internet newspaper on Twitter basically. Yeah, it's just part see of your what job. Overnight, so it's basically basically my job. So my my job is basically gathering as much information as possible at all times. Which is I need to be informed about Counter Strike, League of Legends, Overwatch League, Fortnite. Twitch, I do the exact YouTube. same thing. Like I am ready. I need to suck up everything. So, <clears throat> and we obviously touch a lot of things in our like industry as an, as an agency, right? So, 10 a.m. workday, and then I just do more emails, and then it's pretty much right now. We're not like a weird. Do phase. emails eat you alive? Huh? Do emails eat you alive sometimes? Not really. I mean, I okay. think I'm I'm not at a in a position right now where I get like spam with like 100 emails a day. I think it's probably like around. 40 to 50 a day, That's which, is, pretty manageable. which is manageable. So pretty manageable. for me, I can actually write emails, but it's more for me, it's more about talent, right? So even if I work, I need to like talk to talent. I need to scout talent, just initiating conversations, just educating is a lot of part of my process because we pick up like a lot of new people right now. And me as an agent, what I'm doing is you constantly build rosters, right? So you have that one roster for like a year, which might not be your roster anymore in like a year because some of them might stop. So you need to constantly develop talent. So basically I'm, I'm pretty independent as my myself as a person and I work with my own roster, right? So if I pick up a player, which I think is potential or like a streamer or whatever that is, um, we always go into very in-depth talks. You know, I want to know everything about that person, what their motivation are, what their goals are, what their ambition is, because some are motivated about like fame. Some want to become like super famous. Some want to And, and there's no wrong answer, right? There is no wrong answer because we just cater the needs that yeah. we have to that person. So if you want to be the, become the most famous person, and you have more aspirations to like traditional stuff. Now with UTA, we can actually say, "Hey, come into our office. We sit you in, in front of us, film, podcast, movie, music, whatever you want to do." And those know? are okay offices, actually. I gotta yeah. say. I mean, you should visit. Like, like I said, whenever you're in LA, I will take you to the tour. I've been there know? a few times, but yeah. I would love to get a tour from you. I don't tour the tour, but that that uh, that, that, you that, that, that well, you be you be with me there. That would be like one of my uh, low key esports dreams. Get, get Dexter to give me an UTA tour. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe when I come back, we can make it happen. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> throughout the day, it's just like a lot of stuff. And we as a as a group of people at Press X and UTA is just, we think of like things, what we can do. We we get like deals in, we talk about it, just like constant confirmation. Like it's just a conversation for eight, 
eight hours a day basically just what can we do here you know just constantly like brainstorming and like as a collective so i think we have done some really groundbreaking things with our um, agency so that's my day to day and then i go home i change and then there's client dinner so i always have to go out and you eat. always have client dinner. you always have client dinners no matter Every what day. you meet someone or like a person that you don't know for me i think la is just if you're in Los Angeles, you need to make use of the network. So I try to get as many different people. Like I'm, I try to meet as many different people as possible just for personal reasons as well. Just build my own network to make myself more valuable. Right. And it's always like we meet players like whenever we can like talk to them, live updates, because I represent. So me and Ferris, we like we share like a lot of clients and everything. I think I have, we have around like 50 or 60 clients now. So we need to like constantly like meet them. And then that's the beauty of LA. Definitely those client dinners like client dinners, if, yet, if yeah, i try man. to do client dinners in berlin i have a hard time like there's i already met everybody yeah you met everybody so in la just think of berlin but times 100 so you have so many opportunities and then it doesn't really stop there right so i go home 10 p.m 11 p.m time to time and then i get a call sometimes like yo I need well this. you're an agent welcome that's that's pretty much my life so i don't i don't really stop working ever and then I'm in the European time zone since I'm working a lot of Europe stuff. So it's it's a global industry. Yeah. I sometimes go to bed at like 2 or 3 a.m. Yeah. Just because I talk to like a European guy or something. And then, yeah, it's pretty much my... I mean, I love it though, you know? It's Wait, like, I have this niece yeah, working out. <clears throat> production, what do you do when I have sneeze? Just sneeze. Just sneeze. Okay, thanks, production. <laughs> go on. <laughs> but yeah, the, the day-to-day is just always the same. I mean... I get to experience like amazing things, you know, just crazy things. So I think um, I love it right now. I don't know how, how I'm going to feel in like six months. Maybe I'm burnt out because it's very demanding. But oh, you shit. know it. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i an agent too. You, I'm, I'm the CEO of this company, yeah. which I'm the ultimate agent, essentially, you, you, right? You're, you're actually like the ultimate agent, yeah. So my work days are long, but in the end, it just, it's what I love, you know. It's just, this 100%. is my industry. I'm I'm going to stay here until I'm I'm done, you know. That's yep. In the way, I think we we are can we can say like ten years from now we built this, you know. Yeah. Who else is in that position? That the can pride. There's a lot of pride, you know. So accomplishment, I think, especially telling that. I mean, I've I have a pretty unique story. Like I just want to think back in ten years, like, hey, I've done some cool shit, you know. I was one of the first people that went over to North America. I was one of the first esports agents that helped players. I just want to constantly like help and develop the scene, right? So yeah, that's that's my motivation and that's what, awesome, my, man. what my goal you. is, you know. Good for you, man. Good, man. Your days Good look man. amazing as well. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean it's not all shiny like I say it is. I mean we have like a lot of. I mean in, the, in, in those eight Ex- hours or ten hours in, in the office, sheets. that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Excel yeah, sheets, I, I hear you know, it. just constantly like, okay, we have a campaign. Who can we, blah blah blah? You yeah, know? yeah like, for sure. But yeah, I mean, it's there's good times too, you know. That's uh, yeah, working with like so many individually talented people that all have different goals and just trying to help them out is just for me, it's awesome, you know. And the, the agency business is actually like, um, like you have to be really tough to be there for a long time. So this, this for you is a test. Um, the, Dude, it's a it's, it's a like lot the of... ultimate life of serving others, and 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 many times it's tough. I mean. I can give you a perfect example, like yesterday or the day before yesterday, Wonder said on, it's like the smallest stitch stuff, but <laughs> either you have it within you or you don't. And yeah. I, I saw in Skype and uh, we have a, a they have a, a channel with all the whole team, the support staff, plus uh, our um, opera- gaming operations guy, yep. Jamie, plus Jacobo, which is IT and operations and myself, right? Yep. And in that in that channel, Wonder said, my, my computer is freezing, right? Um, and, and because who knows, right? It's standard stuff, hardware stuff, or who knows? And it's so something so small, right? Mm-hmm. You can literally like, just wait till Monday and it'll get fixed. Jacobo will go and fix it. Uh, but I was getting almost a heart attack, you know? Like I, I was like, how can we solve this right now? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about computers myself. How can I, how can I go there and solve it? How, you know what I mean? And, and it just, it just kills you slowly. It's like, oh my God, it's so much pressure to make sure they're happy and Dude, it's just being an agent, like, especially in that position right now, it's like I have a bucket of water and I have 10 fires and I need to choose, like, which I extinguish first, you know? I get emails sometimes that, like, at 2 a.m. I was like, oh, my God, you know, yeah, like, yeah. what what is happening, you know? I don't know if I'm, I can ever get used to it, but I think it's a growing process, you know? For me, just about learning. Um, it's It's tough, but 
it's what you say it's a 24 7 job like it's, it, is. it is it literally is a 24 like i'm taking a shower i'm thinking about the business i'm with my son and i'm thinking about the business i'm with my wife and i'm thinking about the business i'm just thinking about the business all the time i can at no point can i just put the do not disturb button and and yeah i mean that's what we chose like to I, do, I, you know? I i truly try sometimes but yeah. It's tough. I, you, I still look if there's any new emails or any urgency yeah. going on because it's just part of like, what you do, right? Is things that are ur urgent, emergencies just happen at any time. You gotta yeah, take care of it. That's that's the beauty of this industry too. It's never sleeping, right? It's never just sleeping. constantly moving. What you said about global is this a global industry? It's a global industry, and just we have only touched the West, you know, like this only like Europe and North America. Just imagine if we start to tap into China too, like. Which I think will which happen. is hard to tap into anyway. You have it will you know, hard, but it has to happen at one point, right? Yeah. it will always be through already existing companies or sure princelings yeah. uh, from uh, from there, because that's how it works there. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, yeah, I hear you. Um, so let's go a little bit. 160. Oh, wait, 160. Wait, why not? 160 degrees 160 production. Degrees. We're going 160 degrees, which is not 180. It's like slightly less, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I like that. Nobody else will, but I do. Um, so is there any moment before or while or after um, your esports career started that defined kind of what you are today? No. Gaming, like competing in the LCS defined me, I think. Oh, really? I well, think how so? I was like a really shy kid before. I came into gaming. I started to realize, holy shit, all these people are actually like, cool people they start to make conversation you get to learn a lot i think you you grow up you know if you if you're like a player some people don't grow up they don't even know how to like order food or something but the players that do grow up they are like i mean like yourself you know i think like i said already before like an hour ago that i think playing taught me more than anything else in life that i could have done it starts with like deductive reasoning you know like it's super easy to put things together once nope. you like play league of legends at a higher level if you apply the same skill, like the ability to learn for me. So I went from Counter-Strike to World of Warcraft to League of Legends was just like, it's like a normal transition, right? But I played same professional in Counter-Strike. Then I went to play WoW at the highest level. I mean, you played WoW too. You were obviously the best warrior in the world, right? At one point. Um, so you actually know how it I makes feel. me happy that you mentioned it. So happy. I, I, yeah. Best just, time. Just like um, a small history lesson. This guy used to be actually decent at World of Warcraft. Decent. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No, but oh, there's um, actually a, a WarcraftMovies.com video of me. Ocelot get WLD. -ed. WLD. <laughs> yeah, because that was the Warrior Lock Druid. That was my setup. I played the uh, Jungle Cleave. I was like the Pharaoh. Oh. I was like, yeah. That's fun, actually. That was, that was very super unique. Fun. So yeah, I played from there, and then I went to League of Legends. Um. But I think League of Legends, like just traveling around and competing at the highest level, I don't think anything else in my life really like prepared me more than being in a team, working in a team environment. And for some, it's just football, you know, it's like people play in a, like in a club, like when they're like very small, they grow up with football, they learn a lot of like discipline, they learn of like teamwork and everything. For me, it was esports and gaming. So I never was sure I played some sports when I was like smaller, but nothing put me more into a position where I'm right now than esports actually so let's think exactly about esports so what is specific abilities do you think you learned discipline because, okay discipline discipline with, with what you like huh Imp discipline what you like just <laughs> important learning differentiator <laughs> discipline as in you need to learn how to love the grind you know if you don't love the grind i don't think you can actually be in a position where where you are for example you know if you don't love the grind like this is not for you you can't do it you know mm -hmm. So I think <clears throat> just discipline and grinding is like really important, especially like in esports because industry doesn't sleep. If you put on like one or two days off, someone will catch up to you. So constant hunt for like race, you know. So I think it just yeah, I think those skills are like just so important. And then I was so lucky that I met the right people at the right time in my life through esports that taught me a lot of stuff about like life and business, you know. So I have like a really awesome group who, of mentors. Who are those people? Can you? So I think one of the people is definitely Gavi. Gavi oh, from Gavi, Twitch. Yeah, I know him. He's uh, just fantastic like, guy. He's the happiest person. He's a brother. He's a brother. He's he's uh, 48, 48 level 18. That's how he calls himself, you know. <laughs> 48 years old, level 18. So <laughs> he's like this kid that just like, he like just talking to him. I talked to him like two or three hours and then at each event and then like 
two or three times a year. But how many people do you think hate Harvey? I mean, Garvey, sorry, uh, no apart one. from they, zero. They, no, there's no one. Like, like there's there's no, nobody I know no, no. that doesn't like Garvey. No. Not one person. You know how fucking hard that is? Especially with how, I mean, he's kind of edgy as well. Like, he just is likable. Like, he's just he's always very, optimistic, yeah. always positive. Always, like, he's, he's a bro. He's just a bro, you know, I really appreciate him. And then um, another person is just probably Sat, Sat from Level yeah, 99. Sad. He's, he's super smart. Very smart, you know, just one of the smartest guys I know. What is he doing right now? Is he still level 99? He's level 99, yeah. He's doing he's doing really well, I think. Um, so, and then there's like a couple other people, but those are like two really important parts. And then I think with my new boss, I found that third person maybe. I nice. Think How is he called? Damon. Damon. Damon Lau. I think he's like very smart in what he does. Um, and is he also an agent? Or historically maybe? Kind of, you know. he. I think he's sold like a couple of agencies and... He is just very smart. He he did the whole press X acquisition to the ETA and mm -hmm. yeah, I think just having the right people that you can learn from is the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, you have mentors too, right? So oh, yeah. if you want to talk about your mentor, like that you mentor, oh, sure. Uh, no? um, so Jens Hilgers mm -hmm. founded ESL and he's a co-owner in G two. Yep. Um, I met him and I mean the the guy is like Jens is unbelievable. Like yep. and he he sometimes has bad rep because he's very direct as a good German. Uh, but I, I I take it very well, and 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 uh, because I, I'm very self-critical, yeah. and I like critic. I hate when you just I hate um, um, how do you call that? Um, um, how how do you call that when when some production when somebody uh, is speaking about something and everybody in the room is saying the same thing instead? Echo, echo chamber. I hate echo chamber. Yeah, and Jens is the opposite of an echo chamber feedback machine like and he will always give me the real feedback you know and yeah. i like that so um he's probably the best mentor uh, one of the best mentors i have then also have um uh well everblue which is our largest search shareholder and uh, the founder of everblue is eric mendish mm -hmm. he's uh is um, somebody super uh, known in new york and he was a former hedge fund manager fantastic person and he's super smart as well uh, learning so much from him, you know. There's Mark Lehman, uh, son of Paulo Lehman from Brazil, uh, mm -hmm. also shareholder in G2. Like I have so many people I can learn from, and I, I and I do learn from. You know, I just call them and try to learn. Summit, uh, this guy that I found Doctor Disrespect, right? Yeah. And uh, he's also a serial entrepreneur of gaming in general, mobile and so yeah. on. So these people just te teach me so much. Yeah. Uh, and and essentially it allows it allows us to save time, right? Without going through the same mistakes they went through, sometimes we we still need to go through the mistakes. Yeah. But sometimes it's just maybe it just sticks to our brain. Okay, shit, that was bad. I shouldn't do the same, right? Yep. Um. So so yeah. So the, I th I agree with you. Like, I, th I think having mentors, but I think listen, I think mentors are everywhere. Like I For will, sure. you know, it just depends on what you want in life, right? And mentors are everywhere. It's about your uh, attitude. Yeah. Because it's really easy. It's actually this is a good point. It's really easy to meet michael jordan and take his word as gospel yeah but it's not really easy to mean to meet anybody you consider at the same level of, of you or below and try to learn something from that person yeah it's sure. all about attitude right and um, so i think if you have an attitude of learning you're I mean, i'm the kind of person that will speak with anybody in the plane that i have nearby yeah and i will try to learn something every time and yeah. i'm this annoying person like you don't want to be i will ask questions you know yeah. And only if you're super like direct, like, hey, listen, I, I'd like to sleep, which has happened before, uh, yeah. then I I will not shut up. <laughs> so, um, and I think that you probably same kind of direction, uh, same kind of person. And that is the difference, you know, yeah. to ask those questions when we want to learn and try to always get something out of every conversation. Especially in our industry, I think what I notice is you might shake hands with someone at an event one year later at the same event that person might be someone that you can do business with, right? And oh, of course. I mean, like I've seen that so, so much. It happens so... I just noticed like a couple of years ago that you go to the same event, you see the same people, but they're always in different positions. And it is crazy to me that this just happens, you know? So yeah. always try to be nice to like everyone, just like get to know them, you know? like. But it happens, in, it happens in esports, which gives you the impression that it's a small industry. But truth is, it happens in football. It, it happens, happens football. everywhere. Yeah everywhere everybody knows each other and there's something i like to say which is that i, I want to make money while making sure i don't leave corpses behind right 
mm -hmm. and and because I mean, and I do it for different reasons than 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 what you just mentioned. But it's it's a valid reason also why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, because you will meet you will meet some of these people undeniably at some point down the road, and you don't want to be that guy that left corpses behind because then you're it's like a short term gain against like if you fuck over your shareholders and do something oh, i mean you just yeah you'll have some millions in the bank good for you enjoy it because four years from now you'll beg yep. uh, time to go back you know um, and it's just so important to keep the integrity and the moral compass intact i feel just going very deep right now i love that man right? i love that <laughs> so and, and and now we go super <laughs> and now we go super flat which is what's your favorite movie favorite movie Dude, I have like a, a series of like whenever people ask me what is your favorite movie, I tell them I don't give, have like a favorite one, but I have like a couple, right? Oh, so, give me, give me, give me top five. Fight Club, Pulp Ooh. Fiction. Ooh. Um, I'm a classic. Like I like classic movies, right? Yeah. So you have. But, oh, there's a couple others. Like Fight Club is one of the best. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Were you shocked? In I mean, come on, I'm not spoiling anything because that 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 movie. Year, like, I mean, if that, you don't have that movie is yet, older than life. Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, were you shocked at the? Yeah, probably. Huh? Yeah, okay. Bit. Yeah, fire fiction, and then there's like the what's this called? What's this movie called? What is it about? I'll help it's you. It's like all these sick actors in it, right? And it's like not the o oceans, huh? Oceans. No, it's, it's it's not oceans. It's um, that's like Matt Damon in it at all. Oh, it's the um, the un not not unforgettable, but can you help us? Dude, I'm actually so bad right now. Like, but it, it's I basically I'm I'm a classical movie lover, you know, yeah. like, like all the good stuff. Like, give Godfather. us production. Give us a name. Uh, Check it out. You have like stuff like Green Mile. I think Inception. Oh, Green Mile. That's Green amazing. Green Mile was good. Inception, you know. Green Smoke. I think from the new Jesus. movies, Interstellar was like one of the, oh, the only good ones that I watched, you know. And then just, I don't know. It's like, I like movies that have like some substance to it, you know. What about Infinity War? Dun, 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 I watched dun, dun. it. Um, it's good entertainment. Yeah. But I like movies with like a deeper meaning you know okay if you watch good, good will hunting yes i love it. right that's Matt damon was it's Matt damon right yeah yeah like really good there. american beauty um american beauty was really good those kind of movies. you like good movies yeah man um now shows shows Oof. do you watch a lot of shows yeah i mean the wire is number oh one. really the I've, wire I've, I've, I've never i've never watched it i think nothing comes close to like the really in depth like let me actually dude, type it down in my phone so that have i can like watch 80 it 80 main characters on that show yes that, i have a pink case what what's the matter with you what's the matter with you you know yeah. how alpha it is to meet a billionaire with your pink with packing pink. case ideally a pink scarf too and the pink shirt. and make him become your partner that's very very alpha sorry what you were saying <laughs> yeah the wire man it's uh, the wire it will always probably be my favorite show just because it has so much depth like depth to it you know the, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this at some point okay where is it Huh? It's like it basically. No, is it HBO or is it Netflix? Yeah, what it's is it? HBO. HBO. It, okay. it was like the the number one thing that people really love because it's basically about like Baltimore, like conflict, like drugs and. Wait, isn't isn't that the and... one of uh, isn't isn't that the one that has the that song that ever there's like I hear it everywhere. Um, it's a song that is like Italian song or something like that. I don't. I don't it's possible. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. But yeah, you so check what, it out. What, what 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 is it about? It's basically you get like different angles from like police, FBI, um, mafia, you know, drug cartels. You have like Ooh. the Italians, you have the the hood and everything. So I think it just like it gives you like perspective on how it really is. You know, it's like the the closest thing to reality you can probably find. You know, okay. It's basically when people like tap wire phones and how they like busted like raids okay. and everything. So okay. it sounds like a bit you have to just just watch it you okay, know? just, okay, just okay, watch okay, it okay. and in a year or so when we might do this again you yes i love that i love that uh, uh, the song was bella ciao by the way is it that one bella ciao bella ciao bella ciao 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 production is trying to look at stuff he's not giving us any answers <laughs> production <sighs> we really we really need to improve the the speed in which you check stuff in google okay <laughs> really have you watched joe rogan <laughs> yeah you see that guy he has? He's a fucking machine. Like, <laughs> he's like, he, they're talking about something three seconds after you see the picture. You know? Unbelievable. Come on, man. Unacceptable. 
<laughs> I was running a very tight ship here, and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the wire, the wire. What else? I mean, Game of Thrones, of course, right? I'm assuming. Game of Thrones, good. Yeah. I mean, Spartacus, please say Spartacus. Spartacus. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Was no, good. no, no, no. It was okay. Come on, man. Like, did I? I watched so many shows, man. I like. I'm a really big fan of Hannibal, you know, like with Matt, oh. Matt Mickelson. It's like so good too, you know, but people, people don't like it because okay. they can't watch it. It's like super, it fucks your brain, you know, okay. like whenever, so I, whenever like, I used to watch TV shows, I would always wait until it got released at 4 a.m. because it's like time zone difference in here in Europe. And that was like the one show I was like, man, I, I need to watch it during the day, you know, like blinds up. I, I can't watch it right now. Just, oh man. Uh, yeah. Um, what, what was this one? Um, um, what was this one that the that um team uh, 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 Tim Cook from Amazon or was it Tim Cook, Tim Cook. Uh, just uh, revived actually the, the CEO of Amazon how was it called founder of Amazon oh, I don't know it must be Tim Cook right what the CEO of Amazon yeah Bezos Bezos oh Jeff yeah, Bezos yeah what the fuck who, who is Tim Cook it's the richest man in the world how I know I know I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> so Be Bezos Bezos, uh, Bezos revived actually. A, uh, a show recently it was science science fiction show that everybody talks about and science fiction yeah um, super yeah everybody's hyping it so much so so much was it uh no I it's don't know. Fire? the expense the expense the expense i, I really want to watch that one actually i really want to watch that one yeah a good science fiction show is obviously pretty like normal it's like westworld i think it's a decent show oh, from the, one of the newer shows and then if you like really want to go og i think firefly Firefly. Dude, no one probably Man, knows you're, it. You're, you're like, uh, you, you like old stuff. Dude, I I absorbed so much stuff in my free time when I was just like playing video games and I yeah. was just like watching shows. I was just like watching shows, you know, like crazy. So good for yeah. you. All I right. So in now stuff. games, like this is like, the, this is like, oh. well, I mean, there's also music. Actually, what kind of music do you like? You like EDM, right? <sighs> not EDM, like oh, really? house music. I, I, I had you as an EDM guy for some no, reason. I'm not, I'm like house music, like melodic techno kind of thing you know just like very melodic like favorite dj is probably like solomon right now okay. solomon oh is good. solomon is one of my favorites too <laughs> yeah. i was in ibiza the other day i saw it i was like oh, jesus it's, man it's you know insane. the crazy part is like i've been on this trip and there's this festival we always go to with my friends for the first time he plays there you know and i had this work trip booked there. i was like i'm so sad because i was considering just taking a flight there come like arrive at like 10 p.m drive to the festival instantly and then leave straight in the morning again you know i was like oh. man solomon insane uh, and I, I was with my lady as well we had so much fun in uh, it was in pacha no was it pacha yeah i think it was pacha yeah, yeah that's, uh, good, we, we, should, we should go together one day yeah, we should go together one day one day, man, one day. I, I, and, and go uh, a day that solomon is uh, yeah he's great in the I mean, house in la the music scene is kind of like not where it is i i'm i'm one percent european music like everything european everything german djs touch and everything is always usually good you know okay so yeah that's uh music is pretty important for me right now because do you use it a lot to work yeah i use a lot of music and especially when you can't I, use vocals like what happens with me is like, if i use vocals i can't think i i don't i think a song is more beautiful the less vocals it has it, there's oh. some cases where vocals can be good but okay i'm like it needs to be like i pure, like melodic stuff pure melodic yeah electric i like melodic stuff it's good. Uh, the the rap songs I typically like are those that have the best melodies, like the most beautiful melodies. For some I mean, reason, you want to have bangers, right? You're like, yeah, you want to have beats, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was like super big into eighties, nineties hip hop too. You know, like yeah. Nas is super good. Um, like that. Who else, man? Like just just all the good stuff, you know. All right. Yeah. Nas, ah. like Nas, Biggie. Here I thought you were just. Uh, uh... No, man. I'm. You know, I have many many sides. You know, you never I asked. See, no, so we never had a that's conversation. Cool. Well, now about I this, did. You know? Now I know. Now you know. Yeah. Biggie, my man. What's your favorite uh, hip hop artist? Huh. Well, actually, I have to say, I have to say that the new Drake album is actually quite fire. I like it very much, actually. Yeah. Um, but um, I am, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan um, of uh, of rap music, really. Yeah. I like if you look at the stuff I listen to <laughs> when I hit the gym, for example. It'll be all the way from folk metal. Yeah. Because I'm a World of Warcraft player, of course. And World of Warcraft, folk metal, the, epic metal. For the montage, yeah. Epic metal is montage music. Yeah, like Nightwish and, uh, you oh. know, also um, death metal like Atreyu. Yeah. And things like that. I love oh, yeah. that shit. I really do. And maybe, like, you guys don't, didn't know about this, but, but that is the case. 
and um what else um i like also epic music but that's everybody i guess they always it. like the soundtracks to like certain movies like Hans Hans Zimmer, Zimmer, Hans, yeah the german guy you know yeah amazing you know that guy is i mean pff, i mean this is like not a bad song yeah. not one bad song he's, yeah he's unbelievable sick. and what else do i like yeah i also like um <laughs> you will listen to uh death metal and then the next song may actually be some uh, beethoven uh, yeah you know oh. uh out of joy or some shit <laughs> it's like the weirdest i have the weirdest playlists ever yeah, um you should release it so I don't, can, can <laughs> it's <listen>. actually public <laughs> it's called buenry yeah. buenry which buenry. in spanish means like a uh, good mood good mood yeah and i studied it when i was streaming with buenry one and now there's buenry two buenry three buenry four and buenry five and buenry six now yeah and i keep like when it's like 150 200 songs then i move into buenry in the next buenry you can see how my mood changes it's, act yeah. it's actually a really good exercise like when i listen to buenry 2 for example mm -hmm. i can actually remember the moments like maybe i have some sad songs and so on and i remember the moment i was oh i was a little bit sad that moment mm -hmm. and then you hear the bangers like you hear yeah. some insane music and oh i hear i was in sky high yeah. uh, mood that has to something i mean yeah, yeah it, it is, is it is it like is. that yeah i think i associate music with like really good moments you know like for me certain things just in like they amplify the moment 100 percent for sure yeah 100 I, I, i'm with you there now games what do you play in your in your free time Dude, i'm i'm the biggest final fantasy nerd you know final oh. fantasy game was like final fantasy 7 8 9 whatever it is you, was you like played my... the new one the 15 was it 15? Nah, I, I stopped playing after like 12 because i just i started doing esports then so no time for like single player games um one of my all-time favorite games was metal gear solid oh it's a uh... my brother's favorite so good you know it's well. like it's a timeless game you know even like the first part you can still play it up to this and day. the music the music they have some of the best video game music i mean yeah Incredible. sure you have, you have like iconic songs like zelda and everything like you know like no, but, the, but the music like, in metal gear metal is, gear is like how is the song like oh my god that's amazing i want i need i need to listen to that after the podcast right and then you have the exclamation mark sound you, you remember yeah that's... when they when they catch for you. me like the most iconic games i mean yeah you have like the mario bump when he like hits the coin yeah i'm but... not a mario guy not a zelda guy i'm not a nintendo guy really yeah, but for me metal gear solid final fantasy um what else man there's so many games dude i i played everything um i i bought the, sh the switch for nothing really like it's like the worst acquisition i've ever yeah. made it's not for me i have the zelda game which i get bored with like it's just too much freedom I need to be told where to go. You Dude, know? <laughs> the, 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 the Super Mario game was like one of the amazing, the most amazing games I've played the last Odyssey? 10 years. Yeah, Odyssey was really good. Is it a really open world thing? Or? It's open world, basically. You I can do it. whatever you want. Um, I you hate you it. also have like a clear path. So I spent like so much time playing that game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm more like PlayStation. How I think. open world is it? Like, is it very open world? No, no, no. It's just like you have different worlds. And then it's basically like Super Mario and 4 64. I have you played it. You have I, not played that? I never. Wow. And you thought that you're a gamer. This is like the most like. <laughs> This is probably the most iconic game, like, period, you know, like Super Mario N64. Dan you go, Danke, Danke agrees. When you enter that castle, you know, and then Princess Peach, you know, like, do you look for yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know who Danke is? Danke, video game Danke? Yeah. 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 It's fucking funny, yeah? Huh? Yeah, he's funny. He's so he, sad he doesn't he agrees with you. He doesn't do League anymore, right? So, yeah, he's so really funny, well. that guy. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. So, yeah for, yeah, for me, I don't know, man, like, Switch did not, I don't know, man. I what are your favorite games uh, i mean i think i, I mean I, I i still love league of legends yeah i use it as a meditative thing yeah i'm a diamond four i think or five uh i play like on average i will play one game a week yeah. on average like because there's many times uh, like a, three weeks i don't play then i play three games one day or whatever yeah um but um and I, I I don't know why I like I play only Galio AP. It's just so fun. It's so so fun to play. Uh, uh, so League of Legends is like my meditative game. Then I have like I used to play Fortnite. Like I have like thirty hours total, but yeah. I don't play anymore. I have to play it again. I don't know. And then I have some like some games that are just weird that you would never associate with me. Yeah. Like Warframe. I'm like level three only, but yeah. um, I enjoy it because it's like brain brainless killing you know yeah. and uh other games like there is a game called divinity original sin dude i play that i played I play the one first about... and second part it's so the two game. games yeah there's two games well so uh, in the first one 
if I remember correctly, because I ha that game I probably have like, not even kidding, like probably 40 hours mm -hmm. or something like that. And I've, I mean, I've been playing for a year or something. So it's the kind of game that I play when I just feel so nerdy. I just want to sit down, lounge, and like with the mouse only, you know? Turn-based game, yeah. It's, it's yeah, turn-based games. And, and I'm, I'm like level 16 with my characters. That's pretty and high. It's so it's so nice. I, I just read everything. Sometimes <laughs> I will play for like an hour. Yeah. And the only thing I will have done is to manage the inventories. Like that's the only thing I did the whole time. Just the, the manage man, inventories. That's crazy, man. Like we used to compete and now we're just like having fun sorting inventories and like I know, games, but right? it's yeah. I feel like you know, our days are so full of stuff uh, that sometimes we just need some specific kind of game, right? Yeah. Um and I think this game is is just very soothing, you know? You get into the game there's no pressure to do anything. Like there's no time taking, there's no opponent trying to kill you. You're just there selling your items to the vendor and then sorting out your inventory so it looks amazing. Yeah. Zooming into your character with your shoulder <laughs> pads and all that and and just be there, you know, yeah. just be there. Like and, and, and I enjoy that. I kinda enjoy that. Are you gonna play the new World of Warcraft expansion? No. no. I haven't touched World of Warcraft since two thousand and nine. Mm -hmm. So when I left, so that's nine years now. You left for good, yeah. And uh, because I uh, so I, I was pretty pissed. Like I left the game. I was in my peak of my career, but I left the game because I started seeing uh, melee cleave becoming yeah. a thing. Oh my god! And I hated melee. I hated. I always called the monkey setups, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays you have to be careful with the word monkey because who knows? But, but I called they called it monkey setups, which means that you don't think. Yeah. Right? Uh, you just have you go in and you kill or you die, and I hated those setups. I needed to think like if you see my video on Warcraft movies, by the yeah. way, like. It has 4.97 out of 5 yeah. skill po uh, sorry, uh, rating and like so many, like hundreds of skill, po uh, skill yeah. points that like people give you. They have like one or two only mm -hmm. in the account to give. And it was like all the time like spell reflection, like yeah. I would intervene my, t my yeah. teammate so the ship would yeah, break yeah. at the moment. Like shit like that, crazy shit like that. And, and I was super good at that. And all of a sudden you have this meta changing, shifting into a right. just monkey setup, you know, go the, in, die or kill. For me, it should always be, you have a, a melee character, a range and a healer. That's like, I no matter what combination, this is like the most balanced I thing, agree. you know? But when you have like a warrior, uh, like a paladin, yeah. and then a druid healing, like what, like, yeah, yeah. it's just about killing whoever those two guys go to. I mean, RMP is for like the most, it's like the most iconic setup, right? Yeah. RP, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Did, did you like uh, Battle Right and Bloodline Champions then? I liked it, but it was too shallow. Like shallow. for me, it was. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that the skill cap wasn't high. It was actually high, but the game design and the game mechanics were too repetitive. Hmm. That was that's the way I saw it. It was just too repetitive, far too repetitive. Like every spell felt the same way as the other spell. That's the way I felt. Oh yeah, that's not. The designs are not that unique for, from yeah. each champion to each. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and also, I like sense of progress um, in games, which is why World of Warcraft. I think there will never be another World of Warcraft. Like that game is like a is like a permanent beta development game at the end of the day, right? No game will have so much stuff as World of Warcraft. I, I mean, tell me, is the, like I I genuinely believe there will be no World of Warcraft like game. I mean, they have, how old is it, 15 years, 14 years? Yeah, and well? every year every they year had developers expansion. working on it. Yeah. And the stuff that the developers worked on, on on year one still exists in year 15, which means that it's cumulative content. Yeah. So how can you create a World of Warcraft? You just can't. Dude, there has to be, I don't know, Tencent creating it with like 10,000 yeah, employees. Or yeah, they then, need they just... need 10,000 developers, but then you you will not have the best in the world. That's the problem. Yeah, uh, and they need like they need so much time, which means so much money lost before it become before the game releases. Yeah, Pff, it's it's a. I mean, I'm telling you, I think the chances are very slim for another World of Warcraft to exist. Yeah, and I was about to say before the reason why I left and never returned is because if I returned, I disappear. Yeah. <laughs> like it becomes my real life. Yeah. Really? Like I remember myself. I was, I was so I had only, I have five warriors, right? In different, uh, in different servers and so on. But my best warrior uh, was actually a gnome with a pink, yeah. uh, with a pink hair. Gnome warrior. A female gnome with a pink hair. 
And I remember myself in Iron Forge. Just there, you know, I had like the best shit. I had which which I had some mount that it was like really rare, right? And then I had the Thunder Fury. And then I had like all the yeah. crazy shit you could find. I had it because I created a guild. And yeah. even though I was playing arenas, I would always come into the guild to get all the stuff. Yeah. Don't ask me how a 14 year old did yeah. that. I just <laughs> did it. <laughs> and and, and <clears throat> I went there just to clean all the stuff and I would get everything, right? And I was just looking insane. Yeah. And that no other game has given me that feeling. Like you're literally feeling superior in a, with your avatar in a video game. Right. And that is what, that's literally CryptoKitties. You saw you you understand you, you yeah, yeah so crypto for those of you that are watching crypto kitties is this blockchain based game that essentially which was based on ethereum right um in ethereum uh, and um what you could do is you could buy a, a cat that was virtual and the cat was unique there was nobody uh, nobody could have that cat again and then there were like levels of exclusivity on that cut and there were cats that were sold for 20,000 bucks. Yeah. And people, because you could see what somebody has as cat, then that gives, then you know that that guy that has that cat is like big deal, I yeah. guess, or has money. Or an idiot, who knows? But <laughs> yeah. he has, he has, definitely has money. So that's what World of Warcraft gave you. He gave you the feeling of feeling superior because yeah. my guild is better because we, clo we killed whatever, you know. And Dude, that title when you like the first yes. first kill titles and then the gladiator titles you know and it appears in the chat yeah everybody sees it it's dude actually yeah it's crazy i mean i played it a lot even though after i stopped playing just for the social aspect i think it's just one of the games that, that is it that is it's the one game there's no other game like world of warcraft no that, has, that you play purely for social without yep. competing you True. you can just whatever the fuck you want you can just do achievements or like one were you horde or alliance but, I was both. I played a lot of hot though, like a lot right. of hot of my time. So either Iron Forge or in uh, Ornigram, or Ogrima, Ogrima, Ogrima. Yeah. You were just like how you many just stand hours? There on your mount, you know. How and many then... hours would you use the mount to jump around? How many hours Too would you many. do that? I think I checked last time. I checked. I had over 180 days played in World. <laughs> I was pretty sure I had playing. more though. Huh? Pretty sure I had more. <laughs> <laughs> like 180 days of my life, I spent in the virtual reality you know no, I, I had a physical life and then i had a real life that way that, that's that's with world of warcraft yeah tough tough um i'm glad i'm not there yet uh, again also i know that the vanilla is coming yeah no vanilla but vanilla yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty much right right uh and uh, i will not touch it like honestly i want g2 to succeed and that like either or right <laughs> yeah it's either or it's literally either or yeah um anyway how how, how, much, how long are we here for uh production too long too long <laughs> oh, shit, man. all right you listen uh it's probably the first time that uh, the time has passed without us realizing which is a good thing mm -hmm. yeah, i had very good fun yeah man it was awesome i mean you're a killer we just went super deep talked a bit of esports stuff you know and then we ended a bit deep and then yeah it's good good conversation all around you know my man hey Thanks. thanks a lot for coming bro no worries man anytime i'm here you're and uh yeah we should definitely repeat this for sure. we should definitely repeat this this was amazing uh you want to say something to the fans fans yeah i mean thanks for watching you know i think uh, this has been a long long podcast hope you like guys appreciate the insight that uh i, ju I just told him in the break it's like yeah this is like the color edition because he just kept on talking and talking you know but, <laughs> i'm sorry uh, for that but it's, it's great you know i think it's a lot of really insightful things um yeah i'm just yeah, pretty grateful for like uh, opportunity to just keep doing what I love doing. And then these things are super fun once in a while. So thanks for inviting me, you know? Awesome. You keep kicking ass. Uh, for sure, man. We'll I want to have next... you. I want, I want you to have the best players out there. Uh, yeah, we, I see you in the next off season. Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, I enjoy these things. <laughs> yeah. we, we have a good time, we have a good time negotiating <laughs> and doing things like this. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Thanks yeah. very much for, for being here. No worries, man. Thank you so much. All right. For everybody else, thanks very much for being here. Um, we had Dexter today. As you can see, he's amazing. Many of you actually don't know him, I'm pretty sure. But now you do. And uh, I recommend that you guys follow him on Twitter, which I'm pretty sure is around somewhere in the overlay production. Fix that for me, please. And uh, follow him. He has always nice stuff to say. He's an Americanized German, as you saw. <laughs> Not yet. I'm no. still pretty German, I think. I know. I think you're pretty Americanized <laughs> already. I think, <laughs> I think you're pretty Americanized. 
Uh, and we had a good time. Nice questions. He actually bounced a lot of questions to myself, which I enjoyed. And I hope you guys enjoyed as well. With all that said, after this, um, after me talking, a clip will roll in with me uh, advertising our shop. But before advertising our shop, let me advertise our shop. G2esports.com slash shop. Buy everything. And now please go advertise the shop.